from Perjury Paper Crafts and I'm back with another 12 by 12 process video for you today. Um, this one is a really fun layout and a really bright layout. Um, as you can see there I've got a uh, blue background um, that's sort of watercoloured and then I've got that cut file on top. So while I'm just um, playing with the placement of these photographs I'll explain what I've already done. Um, uh, the other night I couldn't sleep um, so I decided to have a go and basically mess around with a whole load of mixed media papers and backgrounds and paints and various different bits and pieces and this is what one of the ones I came up with is this background here so um, you'll see it better on the close-ups but what you will see is I've used I've um, first of all gessoed the page I then added some texture um, paste using a piece of kitchen roll and I kind of dabbed it all over and then on top of that I added uh, lots of different bits of watercolour and let it run around, did splatters of watercolour and I used um, two or three different blues to get that lovely um, sort of uh, ombre effect of the blues there in the background. On top of that um, you will see that cut file there, that's a cut file from cut to you and it comes with that digger and it also comes with a phrase that says a little dirt never hurts um, which I'm going to use on a completely different um, layout that I'm going to do that I'm planning to do. Um, I've already backed that cut file, I've used some papers from a, a range called On The Go by Bow Bunny, I think it's quite an old um, range and I um, backed all of it in that lovely spot of yellow, bits of it in brown just the tyres and, and a couple of extra sections and then I also did um, the windows in acetate so they obviously look like they're see-through. Um, what I'm doing now is I've had a bit of trouble with this one because I know that I want to get those four photographs on um, of my son playing in the sand with a digger, hence the digger cut file, um, but I can't seem to figure out how to play, position it on the page. So I'm using some of the white colour core um, cardstock and what I'm doing here is I'm sanding it so on the inside there's like a creamy colour and on top it's white so I'm sanding off some of the white to try and get the cream colour to come through because I'm thinking I might put this at the bottom of the page and have it like um, like sand and as you can see here have the digger sort of travelling down the sand um, and in the end I didn't like it, it didn't seem to fit with the with the cut file and with the, the background that I'd already done so I decide to leave that, I'll use that another day. So I just kind of carry on playing with the positioning of this um, because I know eventually it will come to me um, but it's it's eluding me. Um, today I'm, I'm contemplating here cutting the cut file in half um, and having it sort of hanging off the side. Um, I might have done that had I have not spent quite so long um, backing it and making it look um, nice. This was actually the second one of these diggers that I'd done. Uh, the other one was a bit smaller and I backed it in a different yellow and it didn't look right so I ended up doing it again. Um, so you can see up at the top there I've put some little tiny diggers. Um, they are fussy cut from the uh, some of the other papers and I decided I like that strip that runs along the top and bottom so I go ahead and I fussy cut um, a whole load more so that I can have a strip going one way on the bottom and one way on the top. Um, I'm pretty much decided now that digger is just going to go across the middle and I'm going to cover um, part of it with my um, photographs. I'm backing them now onto vellum. Um, I took a long time um, cropping these photographs to try and make sure that the two that were going to sit next to each other, the skyline and the sea line um, were lined up and it, it wasn't wonky because the last thing you want is it would were the photographs to look like they were wonky so I, I lined those up. So I'm thinking I'm just going to go there on top of that digger, I'm going to pull it down a little bit further and that's where that's roughly going to go. Um, I still play with it a little bit, I wonk it off to one side, straighten it up. I decide to put a little bit more colour behind it by using this, um, more of this paper from the Bow Bunny on the go range. And uh, I was about to be brave and cut it with my scissors and then I decided I wasn't brave enough. Uh, so popped my guillotine up off the floor. Uh, unfortunately my desk isn't quite big enough to fit it on. Uh, so just going to quickly guillotine those edges off. Uh, take a little bit more off one of the edges. And take off that banding strip. It just gives an extra little bit of colour that's popping out from behind that photograph. I don't matte anymore. I think there's enough colour going on in the background. I didn't want to do 
um, any more uh, matting, any more colours. Uh, what I do do though is take some adhesive foam um, and cut pieces that are big enough to go on the back of the photograph and to go on the back of the cut file. Um, I think this is especially important here because the um, backing paper, the, the background, um, is really very, very bumpy from um, the texture paste and from the uh, mixed media that I've done on there. Um, it's slightly warped. Um, it will be fine once it's it's flattened out, but I do think it needed plenty to be able to stick it down properly. There was no way I was going to even attempt to stick this down without some foaming. Um, so I'm just doing little pieces there just to prop up all the different areas of the figure to make sure that it sticks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, some double-sided sticky tape and I'm going to use some um, wet glue as well just to really make sure that it, it stays where I want it to stay. Um, so that's where it's going. I use the wheels as a guide. I put the wheels in the right position and then move those. So I'm popping some tape on at the back at the moment and then I'm going to add some wet glue. Um, you can see there while the diggers out of the way all the different colours that I, I managed to get on that background um, and in future when uh, when I know what I'm going to do with my layouts and my mixed media I will record that part as well it just happens to be um, a really late night when I couldn't seem to sleep so I think I ended up doing about six or seven different backgrounds um, and that just happened to be one of them and it fit with the colours on the photograph so I wanted to use it because it contrasts nicely with the yellow as well. So I'm just sticking these wheels down. I deliberately don't line them up so that they look the same because I don't think wheels, are, wheels aren't usually lined up. And then what I'm going to do is use some double sided um, adhesive foam, a small piece on the back of each one of these little diggers that I've got at the bottom and the top there and I'm going to pop those on so I start I'm just going to, I'm using my mat to help me line this up and I pop the middle one in and then I do the other ones um, either side like I say um, from the piece of paper that I cut them from some of them um, face one way and some face the other way so I had to be careful to choose um, the right ones and make sure um, they were facing in the right direction and then try and get all different coloured ones as well because they were all different and then I've got a line at the top as well so I'm going to do exactly the same thing here and I'm just sticking down with some adhesive foam it's quite a thick adhesive foam this one it's like a tape it's on a, on a run of tape so it's double sided and um, the stuff that I use on the back of my pictures and on the back of my cut files is single sided so I always have to add that extra bit of adhesive on onto there but I've not found any large double sided and um, stuff but that that works perfectly surprise how much I get through of that actually <laughs> quite a lot so there's my little diggers running across the top and the bottom and that's where the photograph is going to go now I'm going to mess about with my alphas here um, I love these alphas and um, I don't know if you can see but they are black but they have um, like a, a black and white checkered line down one side really like these um, I realised very quickly that I don't have any eyes, so I use exclamation marks. Um, I don't have enough G's to write digging, so I have to write digging. Um, and I don't have enough of them to write the other two words that are going to make up the title, which is just keep. Um, it's kind of a bit of a um, a take on the on the just on the uh, finding Dory. Um, just keep swimming. Uh, so I did just keep digging um, but I didn't like that in the end with those ones so I take those back off they didn't actually stick very well on that mixed media background and instead I go for more of these um, foam alphas which stick an awful lot better just because of the nature of them I think they're more flexible those other ones were quite a rigid plastic these were much more flexible and stick down really nicely and I had an extra g so I could write the full word digging digging sorry 
and then I decide to put the little dots on there because he does it just keeps digging all day long um, one of my son's favourite places to be is the beach and he has a set of three um, little diggers like the one that I've used there on the cup file uh, so when I saw this cup file I knew I had to, to use it for this particular these particular photographs they just keep digging so I um and ah again, do I do it wonky, do I do it straight and in the end I do choose wonky I'm just going to pop an extra bit of foam underneath the top of the photograph to prop it up um, properly to make sure it's uh, even and level and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start embellishing I was a little bit concerned when I started embellishing this layout um, because I don't have, I didn't have many things so I managed to find out of my stash um, a fair few things that were black and white mo mainly from the Coco Vanilla Studio Boys Rule range um, so I've got one of a kind there, I've got Adventure, I've got some arrows some little crosses and I've got a couple of the flare um, buttons that I haven't been able to use yet so I was quite excited that I've managed to get these on here so now I'm happy with where they're going I'm just going to tuck them in. I'm not putting as much on this one as I have done on other layouts. Sometimes I put lots and lots and lots. Uh, it's just a few pieces on this one to add a bit of interest. I was initially concerned about covering too much of that cut file up, um, but actually I'm happy with, with how that's worked. And what I'm doing there with those little words is just putting wet glue on the side that's touching the photograph and then I've put a little bit of foam on the other half to make sure it's propped up correctly um, and I have got my little paperweight there at the side just to pop on top of things while they dry just to make sure they uh, stick down properly I find that really really useful um, I think my mum bought me that to have at work but I don't have it at work I keep it at home for my crafting anyway that is pretty much my layout done I'm going to just finish off sticking down all the different bits of ephemera there I think I've just got those crosses to go thank you ever so much for stopping by today um, I hope you liked this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber um, and check out some of the other videos that I've got on my um, channel um, lots of different styles um, and uh, some just lots more different layout videos for you to have a look at so I'd, I'd really like it if you could stop by and have a look I hope to see you again soon uh, when I do another process video bye for now